This unit is about probability, which is a tool for dealing with uncertainty. Once you understand probability, you'll be able to tackle a much broader range of problems that you could with uh, programs that don't understand probability. And often, when we have problems with uncertainty, we're dealing with search problems. So we recall, in a search problem, we are in a current state. There are other states that we can transition into. And we're trying to achieve some goal, but we can't do it all in one step. We have to uh, paste together a sequence of steps. In doing that, we're building up a search frontier that we're continuing to explore from. Now, uncertainty can come into play in two ways. One, we can be uncertain about the current state. Rather than knowing exactly where we are, it may be that we start off in one of uh, four possible states. And all we know is that we're somewhere in there, but we're not sure exactly where we are. And the other place uncertainty can come in is when we apply an action, say this action here, action A, it may be that we don't get to uh, one specific state, but rather we're uncertain as to what the action will do. And we might end up in this state, or this state, or this state, instead of the one uh, that we were aiming at. And so we'll see techniques for dealing with uh, both of these types of uncertainty. Now, one place uh, where people are used to dealing with uncertainty is in playing games that employ dice. And that's what we're going to deal with. And in particular, we're going to play a dice game which is called Pig. I don't know why the game is called Pig. I can guarantee no port sign creatures were harmed in the creation of this unit. But here's how the game works. There are two players, although you could play with more. The players take turns, and on his turn, a player has the option to roll the dice, a single die, as often as he wants, or to hold, to stop rolling. And the object of the game is to score a certain number of points. We're going to say 50 points. Uh, 100 is more common, uh, but 50 will be easier on the Udacity servers in terms of the amount of computation it requires. And so it's uh, my turn, and there we have a uh, score. So here's a scoreboard. We'll have players with the imaginative names of player 0 and player 1 and the score starts off 0 to 0. Now there's another part of the scoreboard that is not part of the player's score. We'll call that the pending score. And let's say it's my turn. I pick up the die, I roll it, and let's say I get a 5. Then 5 goes into the pending score, but I don't score any points yet. Now it's my turn again. Do I roll or do I hold, stop rolling? And let's say I, I want to roll again. This time I get a 2, so I add 2 to the pending score. I get 7. Let's say I roll again. I'm lucky I get a 6. I add 6 to the pending. I get 13. And uh, I'm going great, so I roll again. And this time, I get a 1. And a 1 is special. A 1 is called a pig out. And when you roll a pig out, it means you lose all the pending points. And for your hand, you score not this total, but just the one. So my score would be just the one. Now the other player, player number one goes. Let's say player number one says, I'm going to roll, gets a three. I'm going to roll again, gets a four. I'm going to roll again, gets a five. So now we have 12 in the pending. And now uh, player number one says, uh, I think I've had enough. I'm going to hold, and that means we take these points from the pending, the 12 points, put them up on the board for player one's score, and now player one's turn ends and it's player zero's turn. So your turn continues until you either hold or pig out, and your score for the turn is the sum of your rolls if you didn't pig out, if you decided to hold, and the score is just one if you pigged out. And you keep on taking turns until somebody reaches the target, here, 50. So that's how the game of pig works. Now let's uh, go to uh, try to describe our, the game in a form that we can program.